Welcome back to Technique Quad. Today we're talking about building upper back and lat strength using penlay rows. Okay, if you don't know what a penlay row is, come over here, I'll show you. They're very similar to doing just a regular bent row, except you're starting from a dead stop every time. So they look, they look like this. So, of course, you could just do bent rows. Nothing wrong with that. Bent rows are awesome. Uh, I like all aspects of horizontal pulling for, for a lot of reasons. We'll get into that in just a second. But penlay rows, in particular, uh, I like because you start at a dead stop every time. So it gives you good kind of starting strength. You're pulling from a set position. Uh, just like doing deadlifts from the floor or cleans from the floor, you to, starting from that dead stop position is a little bit different than doing a squat, as an example, where you're getting some momentum on the way down, you're getting a little bit of that elastic rebound, that, that kind of that, if you're going fast enough, you get a little bit of a stretch shortening cycle or even a plyometric effect. And starting from a dead stop is, is radically different than having some momentum um, that you can use for the movement. So the first thing you need to figure out when doing a penlay row is the height of the barbell. If you have really good mobility and really long arms, and if you're shorter, then going from, from the ground uh, is very doable. Uh, for me, I like to go from right around this height. It's like, it's like a little higher than, than mid shin for me, where I get lined up. I bend over as far as I can with a nice flat back. I let my arms hang. And this is about, with a little extra bend in my knee, this is about perfect for me. If I have more of a, of a bend in my knee than this, then it, without moving any of my body except my arms, I'll, I'll tend to clank my knees, especially if I'm, if I'm rowing my elbows kind of down and back this way, and I'm not rowing them out to the side. You could do that. I don't do that very often, but some people like to do that. It's good if you're doing it intentionally. Uh, if, you just, if that's like the only way you know how to row, that's not good. Uh, for the most part, you're gonna be rowing back toward your belly button. So if I'm here, and I pull, I'm gonna pull right up toward my belly button, shoulder blades are together, elbows are back. I basically don't move almost at all except for just pulling on this variation. That said, I actually like to do more of a, kind of a, like a deadlift combined with a bent row variation where I, where I get a little bit of momentum. So I can be here and start and then I'll, I'll go up to like the top of a first pull is one way to think about it while being a little bit extra bent over. So I stand and I pull and then I go back down. I stand, pull, and go back down. <clears throat> so the dead stop variation is going to be difficult. Now it's gonna be hard to do that with a lot of weight. I always get a little bit lightheaded whenever I do these videos uh, while I'm talking and jumping up and down really helps. Um, so the variation that I just showed where I, I start all the way on the ground, I do like a, you know, the beginning quarter of a deadlift and then the row. I actually like that variation a lot. It gives, you, gives me a little bit of extra momentum at the very beginning of the movement, because that tends to be, this part of the movement tends to be really easy with a lot of weight, and if it's really heavy, it gets hard right around here, because the sticking point really is more toward the top of the movement. And so I get a little bit of momentum where I can get the bar all the way to the top of the movement, I can try and stick the bar on my chest for as long as possible and really hold the end range part of the movement and then it'll start to fall down. I will get a very strong eccentric at the very top of the movement and then I can drop it back down to the floor and start again. Similar to a reverse hyper where you get a bunch of momentum at the bottom and then you pull it up to the top and you try and hold the weight all the way where you're fully extended at the hips, you know, squeezing your butt and then, and then you let the weight fall back down. So, uh, it's very nice to do this uh, with a little bit extra weight because you get that little bit of extra momentum. One thing to watch out for there, I've had this happen before, is I've gotten, I've gotten tired. And when I get tired at the top of the movement, instead of pulling and getting a very strong lat contraction, I start to pull up my arms a little more. And I've, I've strained, I strained my forearm, my brachial radialis, or whatever's, whatever was strained right here. Um, doing that movement when I was you know, very, very tired and I, my technique broke down and I you know, may have had a pre-existing something there that was just waiting to be torn, I don't know, but, uh, but I hurt my elbow one time. So, ease your way into it. Don't pick up too much weight the very first time using as much momentum as possible. If you are having to, if you're having to really stand up really hard and then like 
really jerk your way into it, maybe it's a little bit too heavy. If you get just a little, a little bit of momentum here, if you get just a little bit of momentum, and then you pull, and you can even try and pause at the top as, as best you can, that's okay. You're not trying to get maximum leg drive, because your legs are much stronger than your arms, more than likely, then back to the hop. Uh, then that's probably a good thing. This is especially useful if you're someone who, when you do your cleans and snatches, especially your cleans, that you like to have that little bit of a, a little bit of a row with bent arms at the top to make sure that you hit right, right on your belt line, right at pockets to get that, that maximum positive optimum leverage in your power position. That little bit of a row is similar to what we're doing here with um, kind of the, the deadlift variation where you're getting a little bit of momentum version of the penalty row that I just showed. So uh, if you are that person, I think this is a great assistance work for you because you're working on getting that, that, very strong, um, that very strong pull with the bent elbow, even when you're doing your Olympic movements. So you can use penalty rows as a replacement for any other horizontal pulling that you might normally do, whether it's bent rows, ring rows, one arm rows, uh, and the like. Uh, it fits in with that pattern, so you can switch it in and out as you choose. Uh, as far as programming goes, I tend to treat it like it's assistance work. Probably five sets of five is about as heavy as, as I would go uh, as far as rep schemes, uh, one rep maxes and things like that. Not really necessary for something like a penalty row. Uh, but if you're doing you know, four sets of eight, five sets of 10, or whatever it happens to be, uh, those rep schemes tend to work very, very well. Uh, for a penalty row. Uh, doing them in a Metcon, uh, you could do them in a Metcon, but it tends to be a movement that the faster you try to go, if you're trying to win, can get pretty sloppy and you kind of lose the benefit of it. So uh, I don't think it's the most amazing idea. No one, said, no one says you can't do it, but uh, I don't think it's an amazing idea. So uh, you can make the choice on that. Hope you like it, try it, let me know what you think. Uh, you can follow us, Shrug Collective, go to shrugcollective.com. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube, Instagram, everything is now Shrug Collective. You can follow me, I'm Douglas E. Larson on Instagram. My full name is Doug Larson. I also have my own site, uh, douglarsonfitness.com. And we have the program Vault, it has all of our online training programs in it. You can go to shrugcollective.com backslash vault to see all 12 training programs that are part of one membership site. You get all 12 programs for one price. Pretty cool. Check it out, I'll see you another day. Shrug listeners, welcome to the Shrugged Collective Program Vault. Over the last six years, we've been leading the charge in online strength and conditioning programming and coaching. And for the first time in the history of the Shrug Collective, we're combining our 11 best-selling long-term and short-term accessory programs into one membership site called the Program Vault. From Olympic weightlifting to strongman, leaning out, nutrition, you name it, our 11 best-selling programs are yours for $47 a month. Get to shruggedcollective.com backslash vault and you will find immediate access to our 11 best-selling strength conditioning programs.